welcome to this week's Newman Update. I'm Amaris Manning. And I'm Alexis Lomack. There has been recent battles with developments with the, um, with the Mueller report. On Wednesday, the House Judiciary Committee voted along party lines to approve a subpoena to obtain the unredacted version of the report. The report political analysis are saying is sending a warning to Attorney General William Barr to send the unredacted report willingly or face legal repercussions. Councilman of the House Judiciary Committee, Gerald Nadler, stated that he was going to work with Barr for a short period and hope that he will reveal the full report, the full report contents of the investigation, including all evidence found. If the Attorney General does not cooperate, then subpoenas would be issued. According to Nadler, on Thursday afternoon, the Department of Justice released a statement in regards to the report. It reads, every page of the confidential report provided to Attorney General Barr on March 22, 2019 was marked may contain material protected under federal rule of criminal procedure 6E, a law that protects confidential grand jury information and therefore could not be publicly released given the extraordinary public interest. In the matter, the Attorney General decided to release the, report bottom, the report's bottom line findings in his conclusions immediately without attempting to summarize the report with the understanding that the report itself would be released after the, redacted, the redaction process. More subpoenas were issued Wednesday evening. More subpoenas were issued Wednesday evening, this time from the White House, from the House, the Ways of House, the House of Ways and Means Committee seeking President Trump's personal business and tax returns for the last six years. Committee Chairman Richard Neal of Massachusetts has stated in a letter to the IRS his reasons for the subpoenas. Under the International, inter, under the inter, Inter-Revenue Manual, individual income tax returns of a president are subject to mandatory examination. But this practice is the IRS policy and is not codified to federal tax laws. It is necessary for the committee to define the scope of any such examination and whether it c includes a, reven a review of underlying business activities required the report bid in on the individual income of the tax return. This past Sunday on March 31st, Grammy awarding rapper Nipsey Hussle was fatally shot outside of his clothing store in Los Angeles. Nipsey was on his way to attend a meeting with, off, with officials from the Los Angeles Police Department to put an end towards gang violence when he had been shot and killed by 29-year-old Eric Holder. Nipsey, and, Nipsey had touched the lives of many people, being activists for the community of Southern Los Angeles and around the world, wanting to put an end to violence and encouraging youth to reach their fullest potential. Nipsey had even invested into Vector 90, a co-working space in southern, in southern central Los Angeles where youths can take specialized classes in science, technology, and mathematics. Nipsey had hoped of expanding the program in parts of Atlanta, Washington, and Baltimore. Nipsey loved ones had received condolences all around from fans and celebrities such as Meek Mill and Colin Kaepernick on Twitter, Snapchat, and other social media platforms. On, th on Thursday, April 4th, Eric Holder pleaded guilty for the killing of Nipsey, and his bail is set for $5 million. He is scheduled to appear in court again on May 10th, and if convicted, Holder faces between 25 years to life in prison. Tupac University announced that the school is issuing a new policy for incoming students to be vaccinated for measles, mumps, and rubella after nearly 100 students were sickened after, mump, after a mumps breakout. During the interview with the Enquirer, the dean of Temple's College of Public Health claimed that requiring vaccines for incoming students is a smart move and by health departments, and many universities are already requiring vaccinations without any complications. Last week, the university had a free vaccination clinic that administered booster shots for mumps to nearly 5,000 students and staffers. Other campuses, such as Drexel University and the University of Pennsylvania and LaSalle, are also requiring incoming students to have two doses of the MMR vaccine, which stands 
for mumps, measles, and rubella. The, sin the Centers for the the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends two doses of the MMR vaccine during childhood. Tulane University will continue to make free MMR vaccines available to students and staffers throughout the campus while planning to develop the new policy for vaccinations during the summer, during the summer and be put into effect in the fall of 2019. Congratulations to Lori Lightfoot, the first African-American woman and openly gay individual elected as mayor of Chicago. The results came in Tuesday night as Lightfoot swept away all 50 of Chicago's, Chicago's wards and won 74% of the unofficial vote. The, um, the race for mayor was not easy for Lightfoot as she campaigned against 13 other candidates, one of them being Tony Preckwinkle, who was also an African-American woman. Lightfoot was considered to be the outcast and she held no prior elective office during the during her candidacy um, during the elections. The early months of the election, Lightfoot struggled with raising money for her campaign, but in February, she beat all of the odds against her and won the first race. Lightfoot will be replacing Mayor Rahim Emanuel, who decided not to run for a third term as mayor. As mayor, Lightfoot promises to invest in struggling neighborhoods on the west and south, south side of Chicago, reforming the police department, end corruption in City Hall, and restore the faith in the government. In, their, in her victory speech, she said, together we can, we can and finally will put the interests of our people, all of our people, ahead of the interests of, the, of a powerful few. Together we can and we will remake Chicago thriving, po prosperous, better, stronger, fairer for everyone. On May 20th, Lori Lightfoot will be sworn in as Chicago's 56th mayor. Congratulations once again to her. In the world of entertainment, the skies are becoming gray after Emily Bett Rickards announced her departure as the iconic Felicity Smoke from the CW superhero drama Arrow before its eighth and final season. Rickards had been a recurring character during season one, but became a regular on the show since season two and has successfully portrayed the savvy Felicity Smoke ever since. And if that doesn't make you bring out the tissues, her co-star and Arrow frontman Steve, Stephen Amell posted a heartfelt farewell to Rickards on his Instagram. Amell wrote on Instagram that from day one, Rickards, Rickards gave energy and vibrance to her character Felicity on the show and that he and Rickards have been best friends ever since, and that she is greatly appreciated. But through all the waterworks, put a smile on your face. After the release of the teaser trailer for the upcoming film Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix as the notorious DC villain, the trailer received over 1 million views and has fans anticipating for the release of the final trailer. Director Todd Phillips told sources that the film is taking shape, is still taking shape, and that the standalone origin story is set to be a tragedy with a twist. Joker is set to release on October 4th. You know what they say, April showers bring May flowers. This upcoming week's forecast will bring a large amount of rain and clouds. Beginning with this evening, the forecast comes with some steady rain showers and a chilly 46 degrees. A predicted overcast for tomorrow though with a slight chance of a rain shower and the temperature rises back up to 68 degrees. Cloudy skies remain throughout the day, Sunday with a comfortable high of 69 degrees. The temperature stays warm and consistent into Monday with scattered showers and thunderstorms at a high of 75 degrees. A cloudy Tuesday with a high of 68 degrees. The clouds start to finally break off and we see a little peak of sunshine on Wednesday with a high of 59 degrees. Thursday will be mostly cloudy with a temperature of 63. Looking forward to next weekend, the temperature seems to stay consistent in the low 60s, but lingering clouds and some precipitation may still remain. This week we have a special guest joining us for our sports segment this week. WWE local enthusiast and expert, Nick Grandizio. Hey guys, thanks for having me on the show. I actually brought something here 
Uh, I brought oh. the World Heavyweight Championship. Wow. Look at that. Because, you know, we're going to be talking about WrestleMania because it's happening this Sunday. Wow. For those of you who don't know, it is once again that time of the year where the biggest wrestling event will take place. This year, WrestleMania will be held at MetLife Stadium in New York, New Jersey. This year's WrestleMania is said to be the longest event WWE has ever produced. There are 16 matches announced, with still a surprise match yet to be announced, thus making it a total of 17 matches on the card. Wow. The biggest news about this year's WrestleMania is that for the first time in 35 years, the main event will be a women's division match. It is a triple threat, winner-takes-all match for the SmackDown and Raw Women's Championship. It will be the queen, Charlotte Flair, versus the baddest woman on the planet, Ronda Rousey, versus the man, Becky Lynch. And I, for one, am very excited for this matchup because not only did the women deserve this spotlight for so, so long, but if you go back and watch WWE the past two years, you'll see that the women's division has carried the show. They have been nothing but positively consistent. The women had their own pay-per-view last year. They had the first ever women's Royal Rumble, Money in the Bank, and Elimination Chamber. They have earned this opportunity to headline the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania. My prediction for this matchup is that the man, Becky Lynch, wins both championships. I agree. Yeah. Another match to look out for is Kofi Kingston versus WWE Champion Daniel Bryan. This, this match is for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And it is the first time in Kofi's almost 12-year career in WWE that he is given a singles title match for the world title. Uh, my prediction for this one is, sadly, Kofi Kingston does not win the championship, and that will be the biggest upset of the night. Mm. Uh, that's how, you know, that's how wrestling is. Yeah. Uh, the dream match is what people are referring to. This, this match, Randy Orton versus AJ Styles. With John Cena going full Hollywood, someone needed to fill his shoes as the go-to guy for Vince, and Orton believes that's AJ Styles. AJ Styles has done exactly that. They had a lot to say to each other this past episode of uh, Tuesday Night SmackDown Live, and I bet that this match will steal the show at WrestleMania 35. And my prediction for this one is that AJ Styles defeats the Viper, Randy Orton. Thank you for coming on, Nick. Yeah, I appreciate it. Good having you, Nick. You hey. sure know a lot about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I do know. The Newman University softball team split a pair of games at Alvernia University on Thursday afternoon in a non-conference doubleheader. The Golden Wolves won the first game 6-2. The Knights won the night game 5-4. Newman is now 16-8 and gets back into conference action this weekend when it hosts Gwen and Mercy. Gwen and Mercy. The first pitch is slated for 1 p.m. The Newman University women's lacrosse team opened up its Atlantic East Conference portion of its schedule with a hard-fought 15-12 win over Immaculata University on Wednesday afternoon. Seniors Brittany Cassidy and Caitlin Conrad each had three goals and six goals and were the spark plugs for the Newman in the win. Newman is now 8-4 and, and will return home tomorrow when they host um, rival Cabrini University. Game time is slated for 1.30 p.m. The Newman University men's lacrosse team opened up a conference play by picking up its first ever Atlantic East win on Wednesday afternoon, taking, home, taking down 15 to 11 victory over Immaculata University. Colin Blake paced the Knights on the day with six points, while Drew Conlon and Rich Marshall were also stellar in performances. Newman is now five and four and will put its three game winning streak on the line tomorrow when, when the team heads to a perennial conference power, Cabrini University. Game time for the Atlantic East showdown is scheduled for 1 p.m. The Newman University baseball team doubled up Immaculata University 8-4 on a windy Wednesday afternoon in an Atlantic Conference East contest. Andrew LaRosa tallied four hits for the Knights. Joe Neppe knocked in three runs. Will Hart got his first collegiate win, going six innings, allowing only three runs and eight hits, and struck out four. Jared Morris picked up a three-inning save. He allowed one run on three hits and struck out two. Newman is now 10-11 and 2-1 and and in the Atlantic East and stays in the conference action, and they will travel to Cabrini University tomorrow for a doubleheader. The first pitch is slated at 1 p.m. Earlier this week, Phillies opened up their series against the Nationals at Nationals Park amidst some pretty loud boos tar targeted at outfielder Bryce Harper. However, Bryce got the last laugh, last laugh, as he belted a monster of a home run over the outfield wall. How about that for a homecoming? Now, next week is Master Week, 
and it's one of my favorite times of the year. Playing in the Masters is almost like going four rounds in the ring with Mike Tyson. It's going to throw some punches at you, and it, it might beat you to the ground if you let it. You got to be mentally tough and you got to have a good putter. That's the reason why I think Tiger Woods is going to be able to put on his fifth green jacket this I year. I agree. I agree. You with agree? You. Yes. I think he's got to be one of the favorites. He's probably the most mentally tough um, player ever to play the game. And he knows the course better than anyone. Yeah, winning the Masters the more than any other player. He yeah. knows the course the best. And uh, something really interesting is Tiger, in an uh, interview last week, actually mentioned that in his backyard, he actually changes the grass of his putting greens to roll at about a 15 on the stint meter, which is really interesting to get ready for those Sweeners speedy Augusta greens. Augusta greens. Yeah. Some players even practice in their garage. Phil Mickelson uh, posted a video on Twitter uh, of him putting on a, a 16 uh, on the stint meter. Wow. Uh, a lot of people might not understand this jargon, but just to give you a glimpse of how crazy this is, the average for a uh, green uh, rolling on the stint meter is about a 12. So these guys are get, getting ready for some pretty speedy Putting greens. on concrete. Lastly, Trey Young uh, had some words to say towards Ben Simmons after the rookie came up only three rebounds short of a triple double and put up 33 points in a Hawks, Hawks victory over Philly Wednesday night. During a press conference after the game with Fox Sports, Young was asked if he heard anything about Simmons saying that he thought Luka Doncic should be the winner of the Rookie of the Year award. Young responded with a smile and had this to say. I saw it and I don't really pay too, mention to, too, too much attention to it. Maybe he thinks differently now. Now let's take a look at what Amanda DeCarlis has for us. Thanks, guys. Now, have you ever encountered someone who seems to be sent to you from God? Brianne Turner, a nail tech in Greensboro, received an overtly generous tip of $1,000 after giving a manicure and pedicure to a client. And uh, while she was doing the client's nails, they talked about God and their journey through life. Brianne is currently six months pregnant and is trying to work the best that she can to prepare for her new little joy. When Brianne finished her nails th that day of the shift, she was handed a note that read, love Brie and treasures she wants in, uh, and give her any treasure she wants, including $1,000. Brianne viewed this encounter with the woman as motivation to keep pushing through any obstacles that she is given. She believes that this woman was sent to her from God as he knew what she needed. Now, Brianne has been inspired by this stranger to, pay, to keep paying it forward to someone else who, who might need to brighten their day. Another man is uh, in, on, in Ontario named Chris Freeney er, recently joined a paying it forward chain as well. When one day he was filling up his truck at a gas station and he forgot his wallet on, with $1,000 on his trunk when he drove away. By the time he realized he had left it on his trunk, it was too late. After he called and canceled all his credit cards and debit cards, he received a call from his wife that said that the man who found his wallet and showed up at his house. When he rushed home to meet the man, he, he was speechless to find that the wallet with all of the money was still in it, untouched. Uh, so then he decided, to, his, him and his wife were so happy, they decided to donate all the money that was in the wallet to a charity and continue the chain of paying it forward. They donated the money to Cystic Fibrosis Research, as the man who returned his wallet had a daughter living with cystic fibrosis and had to travel to a hospital multiple times a week for treatments. Now, bring it back to our home here at Newman, one of our faculty members, Professor Dr. Cruzy, joined in this chain of paying it forward this week. On Tuesday morning when he went to, to pick up his coffee at Wawa, a police officer ahead of him paid for his coffee. Before we had the opportunity to thank the man, the man had left. Now Dr. Cruzy plans to continue this chain of paying it forward and pay for someone else's one day soon. Now, have any of you considered joining in a chain of paying it forward? Don't you just love stories like this? Thanks, Amanda. That's all we have for this week's update. I'm Alexis Lomack. And I'm Maris Manning. Have a great weekend.